All right, I see him. I see him here joining. So I think we've got it going. All right, perfect, guys. Hi, Colin. All right, I'm here. Can you hear me? Yes, we can hear you. We are all ready. Oh, I tried your new link. I love it. Okay, perfect. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Well, thank you so much to uh, everyone on the line here for uh, putting up with our minor technical difficulties there. We have a great webinar session with you today. Uh, for you today with uh, CarStar Canada, we've got Colin Welsh, the Director of Franchise Development, and Vince Matozzo, the Director of Sales and Insurance. So um, we've got a jam-packed session for you today. Thank you so much to everyone for joining. Uh, let's get right to it. So first off, I'd obviously like to thank Colin and Vince for joining us today, taking time out of their absolutely busy schedules to uh, give us some information on how your facilities can attract more insurance work. So for those that don't know about CarStar Canada, uh, this CarStar Canada boasts more than 325 locations in Canada and more than 700 throughout North America. The company's got a vision of building nationwide, uh, a nationwide network of high quality auto body repair centers across the coast of Canada and around the world. They go to great lengths to support their franchise partners and they are absolutely always there to help you meet your goals when you're a partner with CarStar. So it's no secret to us that 2020 has been filled uh, with absolutely insane news for the record books. We've been shaken, stirred, put through the ringer, uh, but regardless of what gets thrown our way, we are an industry that stands strong and we're recession proof. So here we are to conquer the future and we've got Colin, and well, uh, Colin Welsh and Vince here to join us and tell us how we can do that. So um, we'll just get right into it and start with uh, some introductions for those of you who don't know Colin and Vince. So um, let's get started. Could you guys tell us a little bit more, more about yourselves? Uh, Colin, how about you start? Absolutely, thanks, Allison. It's, uh, it's a pleasure to have this opportunity and provide content uh, for your Live Collision Repair Magazine webinar series. Uh, so we appreciate that. Uh, first off, I'd like to provide a quick rundown of today's uh, webinar, but I'll start with an introduction, as you mentioned. Uh, some of my background and history in this industry, uh, then I'll allow Vince uh, to do the same. Uh, my name is Colin Welsh. I'm proud to have been part of the CarStar family for about eight years now. My automotive experience spans over 35 plus years in the industry, uh, ranging from hand experience being a technician to part sales, uh, management roles in auto rental, and the OEM dealership business, uh, which has led me on my automotive career path to CarStar uh, today. Um, I'd like to introduce my colleague, Vince Matozo, to tell us a bit about himself. Thank you, Colin, and thank you, Allison, for having us join the, the webinar today. Um, my name is Vince Matozo, uh, Director of Sales at CarStar Canada. I'm responsible for developing CarStar strategic partnerships with our key insurance partners across Canada. Uh, I've been part of the CarStar family for over 10 years now in helping our stores grow, uh, increasing their market share with our national insurance partners. Fantastic. Yeah, you guys have a lot of experience with CarStar and uh, in the general overall industry. So um, you've got lots of information. Obviously, you guys are in shops every, uh, talking to people every day. This is your bread and butter. So um, let's get right into the agenda. Could you tell us a little bit more about what we'll be covering today? Yeah, absolutely, Allison. So our agenda for this, for this webinar is uh, we're, we're going to cover, first off, the role the insurers play. Uh, so Vince is going to cover, touch on uh, the role insurers play in the collision repair industry and their importance. Uh, Performance-wise, Vince will discuss the important role key performance indicators play in the repair process and customer experience uh, to help you secure more insurance business. And then the customer experience, it's crucial to not forget about the, uh, the customer experience as a whole, and Vince will touch on the reasons why it's more important than ever. Uh, relationships, um, um, some how important relationships are with your insurers and why they should make sure, why you should make sure it's a positive one. Um, and then shop culture, uh, we'll touch on your more insurance. You know, not thinking that the culture and happiness of your employees affect this part of your business, it spills into every aspect and it's something insurers certainly take notice of. OEM certifications, certainly a hot topic in the industry. Uh, there's a rising importance of OEM certifications that can help put you ahead of the curve. So Vince will touch on that. And finally, I'm gonna go for a specific shop uh, that's been able to turn their business around to drive more uh, insurance to the core. So Vince, if you want to uh, to start us off. Sure. Thank you, Colin. I appreciate that. Um, so I just want to touch upon a brief history of uh, CarStar in Canada. Uh, we were founded in 1989 on the belief that a network of high quality collision repair facilities would help consumers and the insurance industry. Um, we believe CarStar has paved its own future and never wavering from its uh, founding values. Um, 
As you can see, insurance work represents more than 90% of our sales revenues in all our facilities across Canada. Uh, so it's, it is important to be one of those facilities capturing that insurance business. Um, but however, we've seen a shift uh, of a decrease in um, direct repair programs agreements, if you will, uh, to arise in a more performance-based agreements with our insurance partners that has accelerated in over the last probably five years and uh, more recently so. Um, although it has been a subtle shift to, and unknown to most independently owned uh, facilities, performance has become paramount and more important than ever uh, for, all our, for all our facilities across Canada. Um, even which insurers are facing their own difficulties uh, with the rising cost of repairs, shrinking resources, claims frequencies. Um, insurers are always looking for uh, collision repair partners that are easy to work with. Absolutely. So in a pandemic situation, uh, what sort of changes between in the relationship between insurers and especially in DRP programs, has there been an acceleration of DRP programs because of the COVID-19 pandemic, but how has the landscape shifted due to the pandemic? Well, uh, that's a great question, Allison. Thank you. Um, I would say DRPs are, are still important. Obviously, you need to be you know, part of the network. Uh, CarStar helps uh, initiate that DRP program, obviously, with our national agreements with our partners across uh, Canada. However, the shift in sort of the um, the trends that you're that we've been seeing over this past year and what we're going to continue to see is you know lower claims frequencies uh, lower driving habits so what does that mean for the industry as we sort of uh, are all looking to you know increase our market share even though the pie is shrinking if you will um, there's going to be a greater a greater focus on performance um, you know, it's one thing to be on the program, on the DRP program. It's another thing to be able to perform. And that's what our team at uh, CarStar is doing to help our stores, you know, gain those, um, gain the advantage in looking at performance, how they can better improve, um, and then obviously perform. And though those those are what are, are being measured more so now than ever uh, with our partners in the marketplace. Mm -hmm. So when it comes to performance, a great way to measure is KPIs. Could you talk more about that? Yeah, of course. Um, you know, hopefully everybody can see the screen here, but uh, KPIs, the key performance indicators, the metrics that are used, uh, everything is measurable, um, you know, and has been for quite some time with uh, this industry. So measurable, num measurable numbers that show your performance uh, and are usually what insurance partners, you know, put on their scorecards as thresholds to earn their business. Um, Although the KPIs vary based on insurance companies, some of the most important ones are often, um, you know, on on this page here, as you see, you know, closing ratio, cycle time, touch time, customer service. You know, we can look at it as quality, speed, service, and price uh, can can somehow some sometimes um, sum it up, if you will. Um, you know, these are some of the measurements that may appear on insurer scorecard which are looked at constantly, uh, you know, monthly, quarterly, biannually, annually, uh, as we have our reviews with all our partners and, and looking at the performance of our stores, uh, finding out, you know, where there are opportunities for stores to improve. You know, owners need this insight into their metrics to see where they stand with every insurance partner. Um, you know, stores can monitor their own performance. We've set up our analytics team and our operations team. Uh, we've worked with them to set up uh, our, our our performance groups in within our network uh, with our analytics platform stores can look at a dashboard to see their performance on an ongoing basis uh, we have the data dumped into our systems uh, daily weekly if you will uh, so stores can see what their score is and improve where they need to whether it's cycle time you know whether it's nps like customer service uh, and have that real-time access into their performances where they can improve absolutely yeah that's really cool so in terms of KPIs, I mean, key performance indicators have been a thing for a long time, and I hate to bring up the pandemic again, bringing this back <laughs> yes, to my question, <laughs> but has this been sort of on a trajectory for a while that paying attention to your KPIs and, you know, yeah. making sure you're in a production planning mindset almost, is that something that's been spurred on by the, by the pandemic, or has the industry been heading this way for a while? No, I mean, we've been, as, as a network, we've been focused on, you know, developing our platforms, um, and that's... CarStar team relies on the Edge Performance Platform. So that's our proprietary blueprint for success to help enhance KPIs uh, within our stores and also access to our analytics platform so owners can keep a watch on its performance, as I mentioned before. So our 
proprietary edge performance platform is what our analytics team, our operations team uses to coach our stores in improving their uh, scores, if you will, looking at their KPIs. Um, you know, we have a resource library called Carstar University. Mm -hmm. um, it's our learning and management system platform that stores reference. Uh, it's what our operations team has built with our analytics team and ourselves to help stores give them a resource so they can reference. And then this is what our operations team uses to coach uh, and consult uh, with the stores to help them improve all these steps. Awesome. So you guys have access to this information at Carstar, but the shops also have access to this information to track in real time how they're doing. Correct, correct. Cool. Yes, they do. Awesome. Yeah, we want to make sure they, they know where they stand today as opposed into looking into a rear view mirror, if you will. So we want to give them real time data. Yeah, that's awesome. So um, we talked about this in our, in our uh, dry run when we did the webinar, but there's some skills that people need to master in order to absolutely kind of uh, get to the top of uh, ensuring that they're going to get insurance work brought into the facilities. Can you kind of cover what these uh, master base skills are that the shops will need to kind of tackle? Of course, of course. Um, you know, customer service has always been an important component of the collision repair industry uh, and experience for our insurance partners. Um, now, you know, however, this metric has even more weight than ever before. Mm -hmm. um, previously, um, just as an unexpected benefit, customer service is actually a key performance indicator as many carriers uh, now, for many carriers now, and in some instances, the key customer experience can even surpass some of the other KPIs as a level of importance or more weighting, if you will. Um, mm -hmm. For example, in the past, um, you know, cost of repair, all these insurers and partners were focused on cost of repair is high, but, you know, sometimes insurers may opt to send work elsewhere if that's the case. Nowadays, uh, in the same facility, um, if, if that store has amazing customer service scores, uh, you know, they will still win that business. Uh, it has become crucial part of measuring how our stores are doing. It's the customer that's driving this business ultimately that weighs upon, you know, how, how the, the store is measured. Um, and this is because customers have more power than ever before. Uh, customers know their business. Um, and we value it and we you know we don't want to and then these customers don't want to use customer co companies that provide negative experiences and the way they get gather this information is online uh, online the online tool has become so powerful now that reviews have uh, helped fuel the shift so searching the internet for reviews of businesses uh, before you visit the establishment has become a regular habit for recent generations, including myself. Uh, if there are, you know, if you see a business with too many negative reviews, often that shopper or potential customer will look elsewhere. Um, so as insurers uh, look to retain their valued customers, they want to ensure that they, their customers are having a positive experience uh, at that collision repair facility that they referred them to. Mm -hmm. So, so I mean, some of the helpful tips to improve your customer experience are, um, you know, as it says here, managing customer expectations. So, you know, under promise over deliver the old adage, if you inform a customer that your vehicle is going to be ready in three days, then you better deliver it in three days. If it's, you know, two weeks late or whatever, a week late, then you've already created that negative experience. Mm -hmm. um, so again, you have to manage that um, in that in that message to your customers. Um, again, that goes with communication. So communicating with the customer at various touch points uh, throughout the repair process allows you to catch any questions or concerns early. Uh, this way you can address them immediately uh, during the repair process and clear up any, you know, any uncertainty down the road. Um, and this also shows the customer that you care. Um, mm. So, uh, you know, and then you want to address any negative experiences as well. You have to be able to, you know, no facility is perfect. Um, everybody makes mistakes sometimes. And if it is on the repair issue, you know, use it as a learning experience to educate your technicians on what went wrong and how, how this issue can be avoided again. Um, so, you know, if it's a service issue, you know, uh, extend a, a small gesture of goodwill to the customer, whether it be a, a, a coffee gift card, um, you know, something else, but it goes a long way. It shows that customer your care, uh, you know, being able to apologize to that customer for any inconveniences or missteps. Um, even if you don't agree with their opinion completely, you know, um, I'm a little old school. So sometimes, you know, I, I, I look at the customer is always right. So you want to make sure that uh, they're being looked after and, and you're, you're looking after those negative experiences. If you do have them, you have to meet them head on and then correct it, make it, make that negative into a positive after. Um, so that's, you know, you have to focus on the entire experience. Um, customer service extends far beyond the actual customer interactions. 
Um, you know, consider bringing in a family member or friend to see what they think of your facility. Is the exterior of your store clean? Uh, is, there, is there ample parking space for visitors? Um, how, what is your waiting room like? Is there ample space for customers to wait? Is it, is it, does it look nice? Um, do you offer refreshments, coffee, water? Um, you know, is there a hook in the bathroom for women's purses? You know, attention to detail. How does the, you know, does it, when you walk in, does it smell like someone's baking, uh, uh, fresh cookies, <laughs> you know, uh, just a little attention to detail. Sometimes people forget and overlook these key components. Um, cause you only have one shot of making a first impression and Absolutely. you know, so that's, that's very vital. So considering yeah. every aspect of the customer experience, again, simply shows you care. Yeah, exactly. It's all about the little things. And I mean, uh, those are always going to get back to the insurance company. Like the customer will always tell them how you guys have performed. So, I mean, that's absolutely crucial. You're totally right there, Vince. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> so, uh, let's see the next slide here. Oops. Oh, I think we missed the slide, Allison. Oh, sorry, Bradley. Could you just go back there? Just one more behind. Uh, just, uh, I just want to talk about relationships uh, a little bit. Um, you know, as mentioned before, building that strong relationship with our insurance partners is what we've done over the last 30 years as, uh, as a managed network. Um, you know, we have an entire resource library, as I mentioned, available to our stores, whether it's Carstar U or our field operations team or analytics team. Everyone is working in our, our, uh, in our corporate environment to help uh, our owners thrive. Um, you know, we treat these people not only as a trusted partner, but we treat them as family. I mean, our oh, franchisees have become family to us. So some of the things you can do to help build a solid foundation within oh, yeah. um, your, 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 your own network and your stores, you know, is, is transparent communication. So um, as a store, make sure you're documenting everything through, the, through that process with the customer, through the repair process. Um, you know, everything you do helps keep the insurer up to date, uh, what you did or did not do and why. Um, mm -hmm. So we always say over document uh, and helps protect you and every all the stakeholders involved, um, you know, photos um, as online estimating becomes more popular, you know, photo based estimates, it's more important to capture those photos of the vehicles to document any existing or prior damage, mm -hmm. uncover any issues that may have been missed. Uh, and regular touch points. I mean, it's, it's, it's very important. I, I mentioned it before, try and mark some time in your calendar to follow up with your insurance contacts, get ahead of any issues. There's a regular touch points by, you know, by asking how their experience is with working with your team, your store, your staff, and, and getting that feedback. And, and, it, and you may be receiving from their customers. Their customers may not be, your customers and their customers may not be telling you uh, uh, the positive or negative experience you'll be having, but they'll be telling that insurance partner. Um, so this helps you address any concerns before they become an issue and, you know, help you retain staff and uh, train for any, you know, to prevent any bad habits, if you will. Yeah, um, all about making that routine. Exactly, exactly. Has to become habitual, right? Forced mm -hmm. habit. Um, <laughs> yep, you got it. The last one just to touch on is network support. Um, you know, again, relationships are very key. Uh, but sometimes that local relationship support isn't enough. Networks like Carstar help you add to that existing relationship um, because you may have, you know, some insurers prefer to partner with large banners and have that single point of contact, uh, nationwide warranty, um, you know, the support of, a, of, of the team at head office, uh, you know, like I said, finance, operations, analytics, the insurance team, uh, human resources, you know, so that that's what we help do to help support our, our family of owners uh, succeed in, in this environment. Amazing. Um, yeah. So with that, I will now turn it back over to Colin to talk about uh, store culture. All righty. Thank Hello. you so much, Vince. Thank you, Allison. Thanks, Vince. Um, yeah. So something that may not be uh, considered as often as it should uh, and is the importance of your employee culture. Uh, in the store's performance. And uh, considering the challenge uh, with, with finding talent in our industry, um, you know, it's an ongoing concern and challenge for, for many across uh, the country. Uh, you, you have to think about the fact that uh, your employees are your first customer and your employees have more visibility than you may think. Are they proud to work for you? Do they represent your brand in a positive way outside the facility? Uh, do they know your, uh, your elevator pitch to sell the business? Um, do they provide referrals, sorry, to their friends and family members who may need uh, your services? And do they treat customers well at the end of the day? 
Uh, if you keep your employees happy, they're going to be willing to work hard to help you, uh, your collective success, and they're going to help marketing and champion uh, your business for sure. This extends the relationship with the insurers. This is how it all ties together, because if you're not on a direct repair program, how are your employees treating those insurers? Are they nickel and diming them or inflating rates? Are they rolling out a red carpet? Are they creating an experience that would encourage them to come back? Uh, this helps build not only positive reputation with the insurers, but it also makes for a more pleasant work environment for, for everyone as well. Okay. Um, so on the topic of OEM certifications, I mean, obviously this is a huge topic in recent years. I mean, even more so uh, now with um, the way things are. So how do these play into insurer relationships and securing DRPs or more insurance work in general? Yeah, great question, Alison. It's uh, certainly a hot topic. Um, you know, why, why is everybody uh, on this, um, you know, mission and agenda now? Um, you know, you hear comments, you know, I've been in business for over 30 years and I, you know, was never certified by a manufacturer before. Why do I have to think about this now? Mm -hmm. There's a multitude of factors uh, that contribute to the rising importance of OEM certifications. When you think about uh, the technology that's in modern vehicles and, and they really require constant education. Uh, when it comes to uh, the repair process, be it scanning, be it calibration, be it the, uh, the types of repairs that can and can happen to a, to a modern vehicle. You want to ensure that every vehicle you repair is safe for your customers. Um, and number three, uh, you want to be accountable for your repairs. And with the rise in social media, you can get bad online reviews, Vince touched on that earlier, that can haunt your reputation forever. Mm -hmm. And 60% 60, 60 of the cars repaired uh, customers switch manufacturers one year after the repair within that year because they get a negative association with the brand. So now when manufacturers sell vehicles and they promote its safety capabilities, they reinforce to their customers the importance of getting a vehicle at a certified facility to ensure that it's done right, not compromising the safety capabilities. That brand change. Sorry, I think we're getting some weird audio feedback up there. Um, uh, okay, thank you. Whoever is talking on the line here, can we please be quiet? Sorry, I'm not sure what's going on. No problem. Thanks, Allison. Sorry about that. So just, just to reiterate the last point there, 60% of the cars repaired, customers switch manufacturers uh, one year within that, uh, within after that repair. So it's, a, it's a very important to manufacturers, very important to the dealers, um, but they maintain brand loyalty. And how do you do that? Ensure that the repairs are done correctly through certification. You make sure that technicians are trained uh, up to date on the latest technology so that it's repaired, as I mentioned, safely, properly. You want to prevent that brand change. That's paramount to OEMs, and that's where certifications, quite honestly, came from. So insurers want to, they recommend, uh, they want to know if they recommend your business, uh, that the vehicle is repaired properly, as I mentioned, and adheres to OEM specifications. If you have OEM certifications under your belt, this helps demonstrate your capabilities to repair these increasingly complex vehicles. Be sure you know your market. Um, when, when, you, when you head down this path, if you haven't already, uh, and, and you just don't earn it for the sake of earning it, you wanna look back at some of the data in your own system uh, based on the estimates over the past year, et cetera. Note the manufacturers that you see most in your market and investigate what it takes to earn that certification. Every OEM has a different level of requirement, uh, certainly different specific training to that model. And you want to, you want to make sense for you in your book of business uh, and, and for the sake of the investment, because you want to make sure that it's going to pay off after mm -hmm. you do that. Absolutely. Yeah. Uh, so, yeah, you want to, I wanted to cover a case study before we get into our uh, question and answer period. So could you tell us a story about a car star partner that has succeeded in securing more insurance work using the same strategies you've talked about here? Yeah, so for the case study, um, uh, you know, I thought of a good example of somebody in our network that shifted their model of business to drive uh, more from the insurance side of the market than, uh, than others. So the example I thought of was a collision facility, the Carstar Collision Facility store that's, in, that's located within Ontario. And prior to joining Carstar, they're in business, and this is very common, uh, through two family generations over about 40 years. They're located in a dense growing population so they, they, they've relied on used car lots, customer pay, a little bit of automotive restoration, restoration to sustain their business. And it became increasingly obvious to the current generation uh, that owns it and are, are getting prepared to hand it off to the third. Um, their, their kids are working in the business now 
that they needed to shift their business model to partner with more insurance companies in order to sustain and grow their business, allowing them to reinvent their staff, their facility, um, to be prepared for more complex repair requirements. And not knowing where to start, they contacted us at CarStar. We were able to walk them through the requirements necessary to do business in today's collision environment and succeed with our industry partners. Through that transformation, these owners have started to realize a new customer base and newer vehicles to the door, uh, which lends to the equipment, facility, and training investments, as I spoke of before, that make sense. And, and now they're able to reap the benefits from that. So sometimes it just takes a new perspective to drive that change in a repair center. And we realize that it can be daunting to take that leap, uh, but partnering with CarStar means that you're never alone on the journey. For this store and many others, it's worked out well, and we're happy to see them thrive. So, Bradley, could you just hit the next slide for us there? All right, before we launch into a Q&A period, do you guys have any final words for uh, in the presentation here? Yeah, just as a summary, Allison, I just wanted to mention uh, for those that aren't familiar uh, with, with our brand and, and, and what the value props are, et cetera, but, you know, CarStar is a family of family businesses. Um, our network is filled with generational body shop owners, as, it, as I made example of in the, in the case study. Uh, they simply want to keep running their own business. CarStar helps those premier owners, meaning ones are committed to operational excellence by bringing them into our family. We're focused on our customers, our craft, and our communities. And if you want to continue uh, owning and operating your business as an independent but need some more support, consider joining the CarStar family. You can visit carstarfranchise.ca, as you can see on the screen in front of you. Just reach out to me directly. Be happy to have that conversation, shed more light and, and more detail on everything that we've discussed and more. And, uh, you know, I've, I've helped hundreds of owners across Canada with their transition, and I'd be more than happy to help you. Awesome. Well, thank you so much for that presentation, guys. Got a couple of questions here to start off the Q&A session. I'm just going to open my Q&A up here on my computer, and then we'll start launching into some questions. Sorry about that here. It's okay. Sounds good. All right. So um, just to start, uh, we've kind of talked about photos in the customer um, section there, but uh, photo-based estimation is something that exploded at the beginning of the pandemic and people weren't really, they didn't have that much confidence in it before. Could you speak more to that, either one of you, about um, photo-based estimation and where it's headed in the future? Sure, I, I can take that, uh, Colin. Sure. Um, I mean, with photo-based estimating, um, when the pandemic hit and as it continues to um, uh, linger, if you will, um, contact, it, it was all about contactless services, how we could maintain the safety of our staff and our customers uh, by offering contactless service. So photo-based estimating has become uh, more so used in you know, protecting our staff and our customers as we try to um, you know, get their vehicle into the store without having them, without jeopardizing anybody's safety. So uh, photo-based estimating will continue to grow um, in offering uh, that type of service so the customer feels safe. Um, so it's not going away anytime soon. Um, again, as we as we learn uh, to manage our way through this um, through this new uh, sort of new normal, if you will, and I hate using that term, but um, well. yeah, it, it's uh, yeah, exactly. Um, Photo-based estimating is here. We have to we have to learn how to use it. We have to perfect it. There are some you know there's some challenges with it. It's not perfect, but again, it, it's 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 again offering that service to our customers um, so they feel safe is what we uh, continue to need to do, right? And including our staff. Absolutely. So um, in, in my talks with insurers, at least, a lot of them had said that they would be far more inclined to work with facilities that have photo-based estimation in place. Would you consider this to be a fact that's true? I would definitely. Um, again, we've, we've taken that um, experience, if you will. We've created um, learning documents uh, resources for our stores and put them on our MLS, LMS tool, uh, resource library, our Carstar University, if you will. So stores have over, you know, 35 documents to, from, you know, following uh, provincial and federal guidelines and during the, uh, for pandemics, uh, you know, uh, documents referenced from the Health Canada uh, to the provincial guidelines to, you know, contactless service to disinfecting vehicles, disinfecting their offices. And again, um, utilizing that photo based estimating how to use it to its proper um, to its fullest potential. So those those are resources that we've provided our stores. And that's how we work with our insurance companies to better manage this, these programs. 
Yeah, and there's benefits for the customer there as too, uh, as, as well. It benefits the shop and the customer and the insurer. It's kind of a win-win-win, but of course, um, mm -hmm. it's not perfect yet. So uh, it's just about tweaking and one on getting there. Yep. Awesome. Okay. So um, on the topic of public insurers, so provinces like Manitoba, Saskatchewan, British Columbia, how does the process of securing insurance work change versus uh, other provinces that have open insurance? Uh, I would say it doesn't. Um, you know, we're still, uh, as a network across Canada, you know, we're, we're, we're offering consistent repairs across Canada for all our partners, for all our customers. So uh, for us, whether it's public insurer, or private insurer provinces, I mean, we're, uh, our stores are still learning that, that through their edge platform, through operational, operational efficiencies to repair that vehicle uh, correctly um, for all insurers. So again, it's, it's the performance, it's, it's teaching the stores continually how to perform regardless of their market. So that's what even private and ins public insurers are looking for as well. And again, increasing the level of performance by our stores in every market uh, will only help them excel even in the, in the public insurer market as well. So uh, we deem it as no difference. We have to maintain the same level of service and quality uh, across the country and consistency. So on the topic of the edge performance platform, I mean, you spoke about this a lot, the team relies on it, the Crossroad team relies on it as a blueprint for success. Um, could you talk just more about a little bit of the, what the program focuses on and how it helps the partners? I know we kind of talked about this at the beginning, but for any late joiners or some more in-depth discussion about it, perhaps. I, I would love to say, I would love to, you know, offer what, what this actually is. It is quite proprietary, um, you know, I, I know there's other um, independent operators and, and networks on the line, um, but without divulging too much, I, I can say it is, uh, like you mentioned, it's a blueprint of their success in terms of operational excellence, operational performance. Um, you know, it covers everything from our, our, our operations and analytics team and ourselves are, are everything from the, can cover everything from the front office to the back office. It may be as, as simple enough as, you know, um, uh, customer service courses, within our, our Carcer University platform, which we can co coach and consult on to operational efficiencies in the back with our technicians, with our painters, you know, discussing throughput, uh, delivery of the vehicles, everything in between from keys to keys, if you will, our edge platform covers um, everything involved from keys to keys is the best way I can describe it. Um, and again, it, it is something that our our family of franchise owners have access to on a daily basis uh, from the team and from our resource library. Awesome. I'm going to check for more questions here. Sorry. Our audio, our uh, setup is a little strange here. All right. Perfect. Okay. So um, on to our next question here. So um, direct repair programs on this topic, uh, obviously the whole webinar is about this and insurance relationships, but um, have they been altered uh, as a result of the pandemic, not just DRPs, but the way that they work and the way that people interact with their insurance provider? What, how has that been changed since COVID-19 hit us? Um, well, it has changed in the, in the, in the respect to because of the pandemic, because of the lower driving patterns, you know, people working from home, uh, it's affected claims frequencies. So claims frequencies have declined. Um, so, you know, our insurance partners, you know, with the shrinking market um, have really, um, you know, want to protect the, their existing DRP partnerships. And for them to add more DRPs at a time when, you know, frequency is lower, it doesn't really make sense um, because obviously we're in a partnership with our, with our insurance, our strategic insurance uh uh, carriers across the Canada. So the best way to have yourself noticed as, as a network, as a uh, repair facility is to increase your performance. You know, as I mentioned before, uh, metrics, the KPIs have become paramount and that's what we're coaching our stores to. It's how can we get to number one on that scorecard? So again, around, you know, it's the shift from DRPs get you on the program. It's performance that keeps you on the program. Mm -hmm. So you know, it's, 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 if you're, we're constantly being measured. So the number ones are being looked at. And again, these, this is a shift from regular DRP agreements to performance-based agreements. So performance-based referrals, you know, as our insurance partners are looking for stores that are, you know, driving that customer service experience, um, they want to partner with them, you know, ease of doing business. Um, so that's where the kind of the shift has gone uh, from just regular DRP to performance-based referrals. Mm -hmm. 
Absolutely. So tips on performance. I mean, the KPI tracking is obviously a great thing, but a lot of people say like, you know, don't take all your vehicles in on Monday and deliver them all on Friday. Are there any sort of tips like that that you can offer facilities? I mean, the general tips that you think people would think of, but may not be just in your head just yet. Well, um, I don't know if Colin wants to jump in as well, but uh, I mean, it all comes down to scheduling. It's looking at, you know, measuring your capacity, knowing the capacity, you know, based on labor hours and car count, um, of your facility, what it can handle, um, and looking at, we have programs that actually speak to the scheduling uh, that help stores, you know, keep them from bringing all those cars in on a Monday and out on a Friday, you know, so they can take the smaller jobs in on a Wednesday and out on a Friday or a Thursday, if you will. So again, our, our operations team is, is, is what we help or help our stores, you know, with those types of tools, even just as, as, as simple as scheduling um, so that they're, they're monitoring their business or more efficiently and bringing those cars in and out. Um, so it keeps their cycle time lower as well. Right. Yeah. And customers happy. Because, mm-hmm. like, like you said before, building that foundation and adding. Sorry, Colin, was there something you wanted to pipe in there with? Yeah, I was just going to add to that, Allison. Uh, to what Vince uh, mentioned is that uh, you know scheduling is scheduling is key uh, within a facility. It really is the uh, the foundation, if you will, on how everything else is going to flow. So that old adage that you uh, referred to of the in on Monday, out on Friday, um, mm-hmm. that's kind of gone by the wayside. And uh, for reasons of efficiency, uh, when we talk about uh, performance-based agreements and making sure that now we have all of this great KPI data, how can we more efficiently move the cars through the process and not schedule in on Mondays and out on Fridays, but you know, bring in some of the smaller jobs midweek, et cetera. So there is, there is a big shift in priority to efficient scheduling for sure. Mm-hmm. Excellent. Okay. So in our talks with um, shops recently and whatnot, I mean, obviously the pandemic has brought us further physically social distancing and whatnot and talking through Zoom, just like we are right now. Um, but a lot of people have also said that they felt like it's improved insurer relations almost between a lot of collision repair facilities and uh, in the terms of frequency that they're speaking, the photo mm-hmm. destination and stuff. Have you guys heard that on your end at all? Uh, very much so. Um, you know, this, um, if, if anything, this pandemic has caused us to become uh, closer, I guess, to our partners. Um, you know, we do speak on a more often basis, um, you know, because again, we're looking at um, not only repairing their vehicles, but making sure everybody's safe while we're doing it, right? That's, that's, that's uh, again, paramount. Safety is always first for us. Um, so are we having conversations more often with our partners? Definitely. Um, you know, we're, we're making sure those lines of communications are open or making sure that the, um, you know, if there are any issues, again, staying ahead of those, um, staying ahead of those and, and keeping those lines of communication open. Um, it has become more frequent. It's made our jobs, uh, more challenging, but at the same time, uh, more rewarding knowing that our partners are entrusting us to continue to fix their customers' vehicles. So. Mm -hmm. On the topic of customers, actually, uh, we discussed this a little bit in our dry run of the webinar, but I wanted to know um, if you have a customer that comes in and they have a problem with the estimate that they're receiving and they don't want to pay that much, how does, the, how does the shop handle a situation like that? How do you educate the customer and show them, well, this is what we're doing. This is the real cost of the job. Can you explain more of that? I'll let Colin yeah. take that one if he doesn't mind. <laughs> Absolutely. I could, I could take that, Vince. Thanks, Allison. Um, I, you know what, I, I really think it falls back to, um, we, we touched on it earlier, but it's making sure that your staff are um, up to speed on the education and, and training components of the business. And if they are, uh, then they should be able to easily explain the need behind different items within an estimate and, the, and at the end of the day, the total cost of repair. So if they can justify and explain in, in, you know, in customer's terms, not the estimate terms, uh, for example, uh, what it is that needs to be done from a technology standpoint, perhaps the customer and, and why would they understand the scanning that's needed, the calibration that's needed, uh, the types of repairs that need to go on with today's car. So if they can walk through that and put the customer's mind at ease, there shouldn't be any concern. If it's just a matter of presenting an estimate and assuming that they know what needs to be done, I think that's a mistake. Mm-hmm. It's all about making sure your employees are, like you were saying before, um, they're your number one customer. So you've been keeping Absolutely. Them and making sure that they are fully educated and able to ha- handle those situations. Mm-hmm. Well, much like the uh, much like the the situation we're in now, as far as uh, 
as far as our, uh, you know, the, the, the world goes, it's confidence, right? It's customer confidence too. You have to make sure that they are at ease with everything that's going to be. And you got to walk them through the steps. We have to appreciate that Trust. we live on a daily basis mm-hmm. and the customer, you know, there's a, there's a, an old adage of once every, uh, uh, once every seven or eight years that a customer may be involved in a collision. Well, um, you can't expect them to be up on the, on the, on the current needs and, and requirements to repair a vehicle. So if we can walk them through that, it, like it's their first experience, and perhaps it might be, that's um, going to build a lot of confidence and, and trust has been touched on with that consumer. Yeah, exactly. And it'll result in those positive reviews we were talking about earlier, the big cycle of insure, more insurance we're coming in. Absolutely. Yeah. Yes. All right. So um, I think I've got all of our Q&A questions answered here, but um, I've got a last question here just to wrap things up for us. Um, Kind of a big one, but we've got uh, 2021 just around the corner. uh, And obviously this year has been one for the record books. Are there any trends that collision repair facilities should be watching for in the months or years to come? I mean, insurance or otherwise, we can start with insurance, but kind of branch out elsewhere. So do you want me to take that, Colin? You can start. Yeah, I'll add on when you're done. Yep, go ahead. So you were talking about trends for 2021, Allison? Yeah, and the collision repair and ask general what I'm going to back the market, even insurance or otherwise. Again, just, um, you know, it's some of the continuing trends and focusing on customer, customer experience, customer service, uh, again, training your staff on, you know, empowering them, getting them to uh, have the customer, as we mentioned before, trust, building that trust with the customer. Um, but in trends, I would say, you know, uh, complexity of the vehicles uh, will still continue to be uh, another trend as these OE manufacturers uh, develop new technologies, um, you know, in these vehicles, uh, our staff uh, and teams at, at our stores have to be um, well-equipped, well-trained uh, in order to continue to learn on how to repair these vehicles. Um, so as we touched upon OE certifications, that's still going to be uh, one trend, I think, as we move forward uh, into 2021 as well. So again, staffing, equipment, training, uh, still all going to be very important as the complexity of the vehicles uh, keep changing. Mm-hmm. Colin, I'll turn it over to you for any other trends that we might see for 2021. Yeah, no, I'll, I'll agree with you um, that the uh, the trends really boil down to the complexity of the vehicle and the, and the facilities and staff uh, staying up to date. We've touched on it a few times today, um, but in order to uh, in, in order to again gain that confidence, the consumer, their expectation as a consumer, they don't know how. What, what, what equipment is required to repair the vehicle. They don't know how to work that equipment. They just expect that that's in place at their repair facility when they go there. Um, so that's where someone uh, like ourselves at CarStar makes sure that the technology, the equipment, the training, the software is all there um, to appease not only the OEMs, but our insurance partners and the consumers that everyone's going to be happy at the end of the day. Absolutely. I'll, I'll add one more. Um... And it's, I mean, it's been happening for a number of years and we just saw it happen again this week, consolidation, um, consolidation between, um, you know, collision networks, consolidation between our insurance partners. Um, we just, you know, obviously everybody's heard about the news of two uh, large insurance companies, um, uh, one purchasing the other. So again, will we see that trend happen in 2021? Hundred percent. We'll see more consolidation of our insurance partners. Uh, we'll continue to see it. So, does that mean we'll be dealing with 120 insurers across uh, Canada uh, in the future? Probably not. Um, that consolidation will continue. So, again, we'll have to be more collaborative as we grow uh, with our insurance partners. As the whole industry, you know, kind of comes together, we have to find ways to work with uh, everybody and uh, make uh, you know that repair experience safe and easy and work more closely with our vendor partners as well. I mean, CarStar has a huge vendor network. Uh, we don't want to forget them and say thank you to them for, for, the, for, the, for the work they do in supplying our stores with all their, the products and services that they do. Again, we have you know, a network of vendor partners that uh, also help us again, and we may see consolidation in their, in their space as well. So again, just staying close and collaborative with them as well. Mm-hmm. And that's exactly what we've heard across the board here too. Everyone wants to get that happy medium where we all can work together and achieve the best possible industry we can. Yes. Also, I, when I think when you, uh, Allison, I think when you touch on trends as well, the last thing I would mention along the lines of what Vince just brought up uh, is in regards to consolidation, but not as much with the insurance companies. In my point, it's with actual collision facilities. And when I say consolidation, I mean collision facilities, independence, 
have a choice to make in 2021 if they haven't done it already. And I believe that choice is one of two roads. They either have to make the decision um, to uh, to sell, exit the business. We're seeing the average age of some of those owners, you know, getting to the point where they're making those decisions on what tomorrow is going to look like, um, or it's partner with someone like ourselves at Carstar, and we'd be happy to help with that uh, that solution. Absolutely. Well, thank you both so much, both Vince and Colin, for joining us today. You gave a great session, and I'm sure we answered everyone's questions here. If anyone has any questions persisting, feel free to send me an email at allison at mediamatters.com. That's Allison with two L's, and we can perhaps touch on your question with Colin and Vince at another time. But um, thank you so much for joining us today, guys. Be sure to check out carstar.ca and look at all their franchise partner programs and look at uh, everything that Colin and Vince talked about here today. They are here to help you guys survive 2021 and onward. So thank you so much, you two. Thank you, Allison. It's been a pleasure. Have Thanks, a Allison. Appreciate day. it. Have a great day. Enjoy. You too. Bye-bye, everyone. Bye-bye. Thanks for watching. This was a Media Matters production. If you liked what you saw, subscribe for more or check out our other videos.